Hello, friends. This is Maureen Lee Maloney, and welcome back to My Doc Journey, the show where I reveal every step in my process of creating a feature length documentary, even the steps where I fall down and cry. Hey friends. Okay. So if you follow the podcast on social media, you know, I was working on an episode I planned to record like two weeks ago and then there was nothing. So you might be wondering what the hell happened, Maureen? Um, full disclosure. Okay. Uh, I got derailed because I didn't get a job I really wanted and it sparked some major self-reflection. So uh, that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, a little backstory. Um, I've always had a really clear idea of what I want to do career-wise. I mean, it's it's changed a little bit over the years, obviously, but at any time, I, I knew the kind of job I wanted to get and the kind of impact I wanted to have on the world. But I always just wanted to be an employee. You know, I always just wanted to get hired for a job. I never wanted to be a business owner because as a kid, I saw my dad try and fail at owning a business. And in the end, he was totally trapped by it. I mean, he literally until the day he died, was trapped in that business. Uh, So the thought of being like a real business owner, frankly, terrifies me, to be honest. But this past week, I had to take a hard look at myself and my life. And I had to admit that if I wanted to do, if I want to do what it is that that I really want to do, which is educate the world through video, I need to figure out how to do it myself. Um, I need to figure out how to create my own thriving business because like Mark Duplass said, the cavalry is not coming. It's not coming. And some dream job, you know, coming from another source is not coming either, which means I need to deal with my issues. Uh, I need to educate myself about creating a business and I need to freaking do the thing. So, okay, so that was hard, Uh, but great things started to happen, really. Um, I signed up for a course called Power With Money. It's all about overcoming issues around dealing with money like shame and avoidance. Um, And then I applied for a scholarship to a 90-day business development course through Women in Community, and I got the scholarship. So I'm going to be taking this business development course, um, and I'm so, so excited about it. And I really think, you know, new doors are opening and it's and it's a good thing. Uh, so I've started doing some of the work in the Power With Money course already around shame and avoidance, which has led me, or I should say like released me in a way so that I could start doing some actual research into the issues that have stymied me before, basically, because I just never even really wanted to to deal with any of it. Um, and what's blowing my mind about this is how how much easily accessible information is out there, which shouldn't be blowing my mind at all. Uh, but I've never actually Googled any of this because of fear and shame, uh, which is really crazy because I'm the person that Googles everything. I'm I'm literally that friend that checks up on every Facebook post you put up that has something that sounds kind of conspiracy theory-ish, like, like Facebook stealing your charitable donations. And I'm the person that immediately Googles it and comments with the Snopes article and then lectures you about how you need to always Google things before sharing. I, I am the person that loves doing that, that I love data, I love numbers, but I have no idea how much money I spend on what each month. And it's really just crazy. Uh, (laughs) So yeah, there's a mental block there. And if you have a total mental block about money, I want you to know that you're not alone. Uh, 
And I want to share something with you that I learned this week about going from freelancing to owning a business. Uh, I think this is relevant to a lot of people because I think a lot of people are doing or have done the thing like me or are thinking about doing the thing where you start learning filmmaking and then you kind of transition into freelancing sort of on the side to start, you know, learning and and growing. Um, And then eventually you want to move out of that into actually filmmaking. But it's a struggle to make that transition from freelancing to business owning. And I think a lot of people, I mean, and, and th- myself included, this is this is from my own experience. I thought like I could just go from freelancing part time on the side to freelancing full time. So for me, it, it was like 12 years ago now. I took my first filmmaking course and almost immediately after I got my camera and I like pretty much right away found a, a freelancing gig that just fell into my lap from a friend. And from there on, it was all word of mouth from from my friends and family members um, picking up work on the side. And then two and a half years ago, after finishing grad school, I decided to try and freelance full time. And this was a disaster for several reasons, but there's there's three main reasons. Uh, number one is that finding work as a freelancer is very time consuming. And it not only are you are you doing that for free, but it costs money because these these sites where you go and search for really like crumbs, if even if you can search for jobs for free, in order to apply to jobs, you have to pay. And then, you know, you really only have a chance of getting the crumbs if you pay for like a premium membership. Um, and then there's other sites where freelancers actually bid against each other for jobs. So it's it's a race to the bottom here where the quote unquote winner gets paid the least. Um, the second thing is that it's almost impossible to plan ahead. It's a real like when it rains, it pours kind of thing, except you're never really making enough money to pay for the dry periods, you know? And I you know, I know for me on three different occasions over 3 years, I was promised a ton of work in in the next few months and that work never came. Three different times this happened. And there's always a good excuse, right? There's like, oh, this funding didn't come through or this client changed or blah 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 blah. But um, ultimately, it comes down to they're not beholden to you. Like there's no consequence for them to promise you work and then to not follow through with it. And thirdly, people just don't understand your value as a freelancer. They kind of see you as an hourly employee because for the most part, you're you're kind of like charging an hourly rate. Even if you're charging like a per project rate, they're very much like counting the number of hours you're working and thinking like, well, if this is only going to take you three hours, then it should only cost, you know, whatever, however much money. If you're charging $50 an hour, they think you are making $50 an hour like a regular employee is. Not that you have all this business expense, overhead expenses like a business owner would. And that's a problem. Um, this is this is actually the, the, the issue that I struggled with the most. And um, it actually related to my most mind-blowing discovery this week. And that is the concept of the profit margin. So I was actually listening to another podcast I just came across uh, in the in the past two weeks called Lady Talk with uh, Ladies Get Paid founder Claire Wasserman. And specifically, I was listening to an episode called F the Jargon, How to Start and Grow a Business. And they brought up the idea of profit margin. And it really struck me that I wouldn't even know how to calculate a profit margin as a freelancer. 
And, and even if I did, it probably would have a terrible, depressing outcome. So the profit margin is the amount by which revenue exceeds costs. And they were saying for a regular business, uh, like 25% would be a good amount and it's different for smaller businesses, yada, yada, yada. The point is no one thinks of profit margins for freelancers. And it's it's basically because of this per hour nature of the charging structure. Ultimately, what I'm really saying is this. A freelancing is not a viable full-time gig. If you're just starting out and you're doing it on the side to gain experience, great. If you're doing it to cover the cost of equipment that you need to make your own films, that's super. But if you're trying to make films or videos as your full-time career, you need to formulate a business, like an actual business model. And there, obviously there's like lots of different ways to do this. Um, it, so, you know, depending on specifically what your focus is, it'll look different for different people. Uh, and there's tons of resources out there, like I said, to, to start get, get you like thinking about how to formulate, you know, your, your business model. Um, but I've got three things to, to remember no matter what your focus is. Number one, create packages that people buy. So you're removing the per hour aspect of your prices. So if you're maybe you're doing something like you're helping people with their social media um, strategies and you're so you're creating social media videos. So maybe your package is like a like a $300 a month retainer that includes you know, such and such, whatever kind of, you know, there's, I'm not going to get into the specifics because you can formulate it however you want. I'm just kind of throwing numbers off the top of my head. Uh, number two then is that you require people to sign contracts so they have a responsibility to fulfill their agreements with you. So if somebody wants you to do their social media videos for six months, you have a signed contract with them that they are going to, you know, pay you this amount for six months or some kind of fee if they renege, right? And then number three, now your business, you control your own marketing. So there's never going to be a race to the bottom for pricing. Now, obviously, you are going to have to put in some time and effort into marketing, but you are doing that anyway, really, if you're like searching these sites for jobs. So um, yeah, just, just take total control of your own marketing and figure out how to market your business, which there's tons of resources out there because that's just the fabulous world that we live in these days. As far as the mechanics of setting up an LLC and all of that, you know, um, separating your business expenses from your personal expenses, there's tons of resor free resources out for that too. So um, I know with the Denver Library, there's a whole small business development program. Um, check your own library, check uh, your government free resources. Um, taking your business to the next level does mean learning strategies for like product development and marketing and sales, but you do not need an MBA. So, you know, maybe you'll find just a smaller business development course like the one that I'm going to be taking. Um, I'm sure there's tons of those out there. And those courses come with the added benefit of being part of of a community. So, you know, you're there with other local people, other small business owners, and you can get feedback and support from those people. And who knows, maybe even find clients. Yeah, so that's what I learned this week. I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, whatever your journey on, you know, remember just to take it one step at a time. Uh, enjoy the learning process and don't be too hard on yourself. Yeah, this is also the advice that I'm giving myself. So as always, I would love to hear from you. If you have any topics you would 
particularly like to hear about, let me know or any other kind of feedback. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, mydocjourney underscore podcast. And uh, you can also email me, maureen at wildairfilms.com. Talk to you later. Number two, then, is that you require, you require, (laughs) I can't say the word require,